Top of the morning to you. Thanks for joining me for another toy hunt. We're back at Penrith for Collecticon once again, and I've been looking forward to this one. Now, if you watched my last Collecticon Penrith video, you may recall I was hungover, I was late. That is not the case this time around. I'm feeling fresh, I'm nice and early, I've got caffeine in hand, so I'm all ready to go. So let's get in there and let's see what we can find. So the first order of business today was vintage TMNT goodness. I'm always on the hunt for vintage turtles to add to my collection. The first table I stopped at when we walked through the door right at the entrance was run by a great dude named Owen. Now I've bought vintage turtles figures from Owen in the past. He's a great guy, always got an incredible selection of vintage turtle stuff. I bought a couple of figures, two or three figures from Owen uh, last week or the week prior, he brought them with him to Collecticon so I could pick them up. So I wanted to make a point of going and seeing Owen first thing and see what other turtles he had on his on his table, on his booth. And man, I was absolutely blown away. Some incredible stuff, some stuff that I really want to one day add to my collection. He had an amazing needle nose and killer beat. I love those two mega mutants. They were either complete or near complete. I think one of them was missing a piece, the other one was complete. They were incredible. They got me thinking, but obviously it was first thing in the morning, so you know you want to be a little bit picky first up at these toy fairs because you don't know what else you're gonna see. Uh, he had some incredible grails. He had 
a, a technodrome, he had a sewer playset. One thing that absolutely blew me away though, and it, you know, you go to a toy fair, there's so much competing for your attention. Owen had an incredible table and it actually took me until the second go round to actually spot it, was he had a beautiful carded undercover Donny. And I'm referring to obviously the, the, the incredible grail piece, the undercover turtles with the soft trench coat. Mint on card, looked beautifully straight. Very interestingly though, it was a dual language card. It had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo on one side, and it had the French Tortue Ninja logo on the other. It had the Playmates logo in one corner and the Ideal Toys logo in the other corner. So it was, it was a real trip to see. It was something really cool, something that you definitely don't see every day or even every toy fair. I've never seen anything quite like that before. So definitely one of those big heavy hitter pieces and it was just incredible to see, but um, Owen also had some just some great, loose, complete, near-complete vintage TMNT figures that I needed for my collection. First up, I've got this tattoo figure. Now, I've been on the hunt for tattoo for a while, and my plan with tattoo is to ultimately buy, in an ideal world, a carded version that's in really rough shape where I'm happy to take it off the card, because obviously one of the key gimmicks of tattoo is, is all the tattoo, all the little decal stickers that you that are, that are on a sticker sheet, in the underneath the bubble and when you bust him out you actually put the stickers on yourself and I guess one of those things is the stickers were probably applied poorly back in the day by kids and and over time the corners peel and they they, they build up dust and dirt and, and it's really hard to find a loose version with all of those stickers hence my plan is to try and get my hands on a carded version well until I do that I've got a placeholder in my collection he's complete insofar as the fact that he's got his accessory but obviously missing the tattoo decals, but that's all right. This guy's gonna look awesome on display until I can get my hands on a version on a card that I can bust out and get all those stickers looking mint. But for now, really happy to have this version of tattoo in the collection. Next up from Owen's table, I've got a 1992 release from the TMNT line, and it's this beautiful scale tail figure. I mean, this, this, this figure's awesome. This is, you know, I'd be really interested to know back in the day whether this figure was released on card at the same price as just a regular TMNT figure, because this guy is massive. He's got some real weight to him, and he's got a ton of different accessories. And this, this guy is nearly complete. From what I understand, he's just missing a whip accessory, but lots of accessories that clip onto his tail. He's got his backpack there, which is awesome. And it, this figure is actually really interesting to look at, because he's got all different points of articulation in the tail. So this will be a fun one. To, to get set up on display in, in, in a cool pose with all of these accessories there. So really happy to have the 1992 scale tail near complete in the vintage TMNT collection. And then lastly, I've got a vintage TMNT figure from Owen that I popped back on, on a second go round, and that's this awesome 1991 Sergeant Bananas figure. This guy, once again, he's near complete. He's missing his little sidekick accessory, which I always love, but that's all right. I'll try and track that accessory down later on to, to complete him. But we've got, yeah, really cool Sergeant Bananas here. I love the outfit. It's almost like um, camouflage, but kind of in a pattern that looks more like PJs. He's got a belt with tons of detail and he's got his wicked gun accessory there. So really happy to have Sergeant Bananas and really happy to now have a couple more figures from the 1991 wave. So we've got Tattoo and Sergeant Bananas from 1991. And then we've got that beautiful scale tail from 1992. So that was first table right through the door. And it's always a, a funny thing to try and navigate when you go to shows, especially big shows like Collective on Penrith. You know, you want to get in, you see stuff that you like straight away and you want to buy it, but you also don't want to go too hard too soon when there's two more halls. In the case of Collective on Penrith, three halls, two more halls that I hadn't seen. So yeah, I didn't want to go too hard too soon, but I was really happy with those three vintage TMNT figures to start my day. Like I mentioned, I was also picking up from Owen three TMNT figures that I bought from him in the last couple of weeks. I won't show them because I'm stockpiling my Ninja Turtles figures for a separate video. But yeah, first table, first table, and I'm carrying six Ninja Turtles figures in a bag, so I was stoked the day was off to an awesome start. The next table that caught my attention, and it was my first of probably four visits to this table, they had a great selection. The table was run by the guys behind the 
Facebook group Toytacular, definitely check out the Toytacular group if you're not already on there. An awesome group, an awesome community, and uh, a lot of great stuff to see on that page. But the Toytacular guys had an awesome selection of, of loose and some carded figures there. I'm talking a, a bunch of real Ghostbusters figures. Matt from Keep On Collecting picked up a couple of real Ghostbusters figures from that table. Um, we had a Chuck Norris Karate Commando. I think they had a carded Mummies Alive figure. They had some turtles. They just had a beautiful selection. But the first thing that I really zeroed in on, and I've got to be honest with you guys, I didn't buy it straight away because, again, we're still in the first hall. We're still really in the first aisle of the first hall. But the second I got into the, into the second hall, I had to turn around and go back. And it's this completely random Cadillacs and Dinosaurs figure. Uh, now, I've, I'd be lying if I said I'd never heard of this toy line. I've, I've, I've definitely heard of it before. I've never seen one listed on eBay or listed on Facebook groups here in Australia. Uh, I've only ever seen them overseas in you know YouTube videos and social media overseas. But I was familiar with the line. 1993, made by Tyco. And we've basically got a, a wave of about half a dozen human figures with a few dinos. A great look, as the name would suggest, a great looking Cadillac vehicle and, uh, and a garage compound playset. I'm not sure if there was just one wave or if they did multiple waves of this line. I know it was, a, I'm pretty sure it was accompanied by um, a, a short lived animated series, which I'd love to try and get my hands on now. I would like to think this is going to kick off a Cadillacs and Dinosaurs collection, but I'm really not holding my breath to see another one of these. But for now, I've got a bit of cool randomness on the shelf courtesy of Tyco Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Very interestingly, you look at the, the cross cell on the back and the dino figures are very recognizably dino riders. Obviously another Tyco line, but interestingly, this figure is, is scaled way bigger than, than dino riders figures. This is more like a, I guess like a, maybe a Jurassic Park scale and Jurassic Park is probably a, a fitting tie in here because this came out in 1993. You can imagine it's all about the Jurassic Park hype in 1993. Tyco probably thought, hey, listen, we've got these dino riders molds or we've got leftover figures. Let's just repackage them. But the scale is an interesting one to me because the figures are, are quite big. You know, the figures are probably, you know, a four or five inch scale with the dino riders dinosaurs, which I don't, I'm assuming weren't upscaled. So they would, they would look weird, you know, when you got them side by side. But in any case, a bit of randomness for the collection in the form of this 1993 Cadillacs and Dinosaurs figure. The character is Jack Cadillac Tenrec. That doesn't mean anything to me, but just a, a, a great random pickup and one that I'm pumped to get on the shelf. Now, when I went back and I scooped up that Cadillacs and Dinosaurs figure from the Toytacular Boys, I spotted another awesome loose figure that I absolutely needed for my collection. And I'm talking about this beautiful Supernaturals Eagle Eye figure. I've got a couple of Supernaturals figures in, in the collection. I don't find them too often. So when I see them, if they're reasonably priced, which they are, the guys at Toytacular looked after me. I had to jump all over this guy. This Eagle Eye is in beautiful condition. He's complete. He's got that glow in the dark staff accessory. He's got his shield, got his headdress, got his chest piece. These Supernaturals larger figures came with a lot of accessories between the, you know, the headpiece, the chest piece, and the two weapons. I'm really happy to have this guy, he's in great condition. The hologram uh, still looks fantastic, both holograms, the shield hologram and his face and torso holograms look great. So, so um, yeah, two awesome pickups from the Toytacular guy, shout out to those boys. So by this point, I've only really had a good look around one haul, one of three, and I've already got a big bag of action figures. So I'm happy, the day's off to a fantastic start and I make my way into the second haul. Uh, and now when I walk up the aisle of the second hall, I see Matt having a chat with Ben. Ben from Longboard Collectibles. I've mentioned him on these videos before. He's a great guy and he's always got a great selection of items. And I see Ben and Matt talking together and Matt's holding a vintage Kenner Superpowers Batmobile. And at first I'm thinking, I thought Matt would have already had that. Matt's pretty deep into the Superpowers line and it's awesome when you start collecting a line like I'm doing with with superpowers where I'm, it's really early on and you've got a mate who kind of knows the ins and outs of the line, knows what's a good price, knows any items that might be missing. And as I walk up to Matt and Ben, Matt's like, oh Scott, I, I've, I've been holding this because I didn't want Ben to, to sell it to someone else because I thought you might be interested. And I started to have a look at it and for the price that Ben was asking, I, I couldn't say no. I've started collecting the superpowers figures. 
One of the figures that I've got, it's only early days, I've only got a few, but I've got a really nice clean Batman. As I mentioned in my Superpowers 5 Minute Finds video, Batman's always a character that's resonated with me. And look, Batman needs his Batmobile. So here we have a beautiful Kenner Superpowers Batmobile. The play features work. The canopies are in really nice condition from what Matt and Ben were explaining to me. Often these are either you know missing or, or knocked about. The decals in the interior look great. Um, yeah, it's, this is just in fantastic condition. It needs a bit of a dust, but that's all right. That's, that's about all the restoration I can do is give it a dust and a clean, and uh, this will be ready to go. So really happy to have this awesome Kenner Superpowers Batmobile in the collection. And from there, I was keeping my eye out for more, more Superpowers figures. Like I said, it's early on for me for Superpowers figures. You know, when you get to where I'm at with the Turtles, you have to dig a bit deeper to find stuff. Or for instance, for the Hasbro wrestlers, I've got to dig a bit deeper to find stuff that is affordable, you know, that's not crazy, um, but you know, but I don't have already. Superpowers, it's early on, so most of what I see, I don't have. There was a table run by uh, another Facebook group called Toshi Station Toys, uh, obviously uh, big on Star Wars, but also had some beautiful Superpowers figures. Had a nice, complete dark side, Alex Luthor, and the two that I was really looking at were the Robin figure, Robin with cape in nice condition, and also a really nice, clean, complete Joker figure. I was I was thinking about them, particularly that Robin figure. Now that I've got the Batmobile, now that I've got a nice, clean, complete Batman, I could do with the Boy Wonder in the passenger seat, but unfortunately it was early on, and um, and I just I decided, you know what, I've been here for about 45 minutes and I'm doing some damage already, so I decided to give that one a miss for the moment, but yes, it was nice to see some beautiful, clean, complete superpowers figures. Now the next thing that caught my attention was some Mighty Max sets. Now, as you may know, I'm on a bit of a Mighty Max kick at the moment. I did a, a review video not so long ago where I looked at four new Doom Zone sets, that I picked up. Uh, I, I also just recently picked up like a big personal collection of Mighty Max sets to add to my collection. But there was a, a table there with some Mighty Max sets. There was one that I was eyeing off and I saw a couple of them throughout the day and that's the uh, Mighty Max Crushes the hand or zombie hand. Y you probably know the one I'm referring to. It's 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 uh, you know, a green hand with the Mighty Max logo is in the form of a ring. It's a wicked looking set. There was a gentleman there that was selling some Mighty Max sets. He had what he thought was a complete set of, you know, Mighty Max grips the hand or crushes the hand. Uh, he wasn't sure if it was complete or not, and, and it's bloody impossible to, to find some of these loose Mighty Max accessories to complete sets. So the way I'm approaching Mighty Max is to really only purchase complete sets. He wasn't sure if it was complete or not, so I didn't pick it up. Now the same guy that was selling the Mighty Max sets also had a nice selection of Hasbro WWF wrestling figures. I always zero in on the Hasbros when I see them because the last couple of toy fairs I've not been seeing them. They're a little bit harder to come by. But like I mentioned previously, I'm kind of deep in on the Hasbros, so it's not often that I see affordable Hasbro WWF figures that I don't already have. And that was the case with this gentleman. He did have a nice selection. I managed to flag Matt over, and Matt picked up a really cool Series 1 Andre the Giant and a blue singlet, Mr. Perfect. But this guy, I wish I knew his name so I could give him a shout out. He also had some of the rarer green card figures, and he was really friendly. I felt a little bit guilty about asking to see them and have a look at them and get some shots of them without buying them, but he was a great chap. And uh, he had an evil crush figure, which is the first time I've seen that figure in the flesh. I've only seen photos of it, so it was really cool to see the evil crush. He also had an atom bomb figure, which is the only green card figure that I've actually got in my collection. Uh, he had very fair prices on them, but but again, uh, you know where I'm at with my collecting with loose figure with loose vintage figures. I haven't really been able to justify spending three, four hundred or more on a single loose figure with no accessories. But look, maybe one day I'll get there, or maybe one day I will stumble across, you know, a ridiculous toy fair or flea market or thrift store find. But for now, I've got to be content to just have a look and, and have a chat with an awesome dude that was selling some great Hasbros. Now, the boys and I also spent a good chunk of time at a table, and I'm hoping I get this name right, but I think this table is was put on by a, a, a Facebook page, a, a seller by the name of Minikins Collectibles. And I bought a bunch of loose figures from this seller at Collectic on Campbelltown. This was the seller who sold me the Terminator figures, all those loose Terminator figures, most of which were complete, and also a couple of Robin Hood figures. 
And uh, this seller always has a great, just a mountain of loose vintage figures all wrapped in cellophane, some with accessories, some without, all with fantastic prices. And the cool thing is, you start digging, you think you've seen everything on the table, and they just kept scooping up more vintage figures from behind the counter, so there was always new stuff to see there. Unfortunately, no Terminator figures. I was there with Dean and Sarah from Totally Taylor Retro Hunters, and Dean collects a lot of the same lines I do. I think, I, I think he might have picked up an exploding T-1000 figure, and maybe another one or two from that table, but I didn't leave empty-handed. I picked up another Robin Hood figure, I believe this guy's called the Dark Warrior. In the Robin Hood line, he, apart from the Sheriff of Nottingham, he's the only other bad guy in that line. That, that vintage Robin Hood line is so heavily weighted towards heroes, and the poor, poor Sheriff of Nottingham only has this dude to back him up. So um, I have this figure already. I picked him up in that $20 you know, bulk box from the Canberra Toy and Hobby Fair. He had his helmet, but he was missing his axe. So I saw this guy, he was super cheap. And, um, and the guys at Minikins Collectibles looked after me. So I thought I'll jump on this guy and that way I can, this, this guy's uh, armor is in nicer condition so I can bring the helmet over and I'll have a complete figure. But now that I'm thinking about it, I, I feel like this guy also came with a knife, which means that I'm back to square one in trying to complete him. But let me know if you're watching this and you know the Robin Hood line, let me know if this guy has one more accessory aside from the ax and the helmet. I thought I now had a complete version of the Dark Warrior, but I oh, will go back to the drawing board and try and complete that one. And then another figure from the same table was this random little Police Academy figure. Now, I'm gonna talk about this when I wrap up the video, but Ryan, Ryan the Collector Kid, who's been hanging out with us this weekend, he actually gifted me a, a Police Academy figure. I think the character is called Claw, like a cat burglar. And uh, I don't collect Police Academy, but I'm always jumping into new vintage lines. And with Ryan having hooked me up with that, I saw this guy and I thought, well, yeah, let's get him as well. So now I've got a couple of Police Academy figures in the collection. I don't know who this is. He's got a play feature where we lift the arms up, we lift the arm up and the tie pops out with a little weapon concealed in there. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, we've got another Police Academy figure in the collection, which is awesome. So that's it for the vintage action figure pickups, but I'm not done as far as the pickups in general. So there's a table there there are every collector con. Once again, I wish I knew their names so I could give them a little shout out, but they always have a nice selection of vintage items. It was the same table where I got the Lanard trash head spitball at the last fair. Uh, I rocked up today because I always like to try and buy some stuff from them because I've always got a good collection. They, they're, they're a great couple. And I see this. It's a, I'm assuming it's an actual promotional cup from the cinema release of the 1990 TMNT live action film. I'm assuming this is a cinema release, but it could have been a McDonald's or Hungry Jack's promotion, I'm not too sure. But I've got a couple of these, these kind of, these movie style cups. I've got one for Ghostbusters 2, which is cool for me because it was the first film I saw at the cinema. I got one for the original Ghostbusters film. And growing up, the 1990 TMNT film was a massive part of my childhood. I didn't see it at the cinema. If I remember correctly, it was a PG release and I was sick, so I wasn't able to go. But as soon as it came out on VHS in that, on that iconic green cassette, I was all over it. So yeah, really stoked to find this, this cup. And, and it's things like this, it's lunch boxes like I picked up before. It's these other merchandise items that display nicely alongside figures that I love to pick up. So yeah, really happy with the uh, TMNT 1990 cup. And I think that's just about it as far as the Collecticon Penrith pickups go. It was an awesome day. I have to admit, it was kind of an overwhelming morning. The event's so big, there's so much good stuff there. And when the, when the doors first open at 8.30 and you've got the hour of kind of early bird time where it's not busy, you don't know whether to slowly look at everything and stop at one table that has heaps of stuff. I don't know whether to skim through and try and see everything. But at the same time, I just want to hang out with my mates because I had Matt and Andrew there and also Ryan, like I said, Ryan the Collector Kid was there with us. So it was also an opportunity to have a fun social day. And I didn't want to just blast off and do my own thing. It's so it was kind of, you know, it was trying to, it was trying to get the best of everything. And then you throw in the fact that I'm trying to film a video there as well, which sometimes falls by the wayside when I'm chatting with my friends and seeing cool stuff to buy. Uh, it was a case of trying to get everything done, but, but I had an awesome day. It was so much fun. Spent a good three hours or so, you know, managed to do about three or four laps of each haul and pick up some really cool stuff. And as always, a lot of great conversations, some new faces, 
some familiar faces and uh, just a great day all around. A couple of quick shout outs, a couple of quick mentions. A guy by the name of Dave, he's got an awesome Instagram. The account is, and I'll, I'll put something up here, the account is the East Doc. Dave has a killer collection of vintage Jurassic Park. If vintage Jurassic Park is your thing, you are gonna love this Instagram page. Pretty much every original, you know, original vintage Jurassic Park figure carded, dino sealed in box, play sets, vehicles, everything. There's one or two items in the vintage line that he's still trying to secure for his collection. He collects some modern stuff as well. Uh, but Dave is awesome, a really nice chat. I had a chat with his mate Rick as well, it was nice to meet Rick. But yeah, I had a, had a great chat with Dave, uh, floated the idea of maybe going and filming his collection, which I'd love to do, so might see that at some point. I mean, I, I just love to see that collection in the flesh and also make sure uh, I take advantage of the opportunity to film it as well. So that was awesome. Daniel and Monique, as promised, hooked me up with a couple of USBs with some awesome original animated series on there. So I was just expecting those guys were gonna hook us up with the original series of the TMNT, that that's on there. But they also mentioned that there is some Toxic Crusaders, some Muppet Babies, some Mighty Max, some Barnyard Commandos. So I've got a bunch of entertainment there which I look forward to having a look at. Um, like I mentioned, Dean and Sarah, Totally Taylor Retro Hunters. I'll flash those guys Insta up. Definitely go give those guys a follow. I've met Dean a bunch of times now. Uh, we've been able to hang out at toy fairs. Uh, and always had a good time together. And it was nice to meet Sarah as well, so shout out to those guys. And also shout out to Dean's dad. Uh, Dean's dad's a, a great bloke, and one of the cool things about Dean's collection is a big part of it is his childhood collection. And when I was chatting to him about that, because my mum flicked all my toys. You know, I've got so few things left over from my childhood, and the ones that I've got left have like garage sale stickers on them where my mum's tried to sell them, and, and thankfully she hasn't. But Dean mentioned that he, the reason he's got his childhood collection is because of his dad, you know, had the foresight to tuck everything away, and so shout out to Dean's dad for that. Also had a chance to meet for the first time Darth Muzza, aka Chris. It was really nice to meet Chris. I hope you managed to find some of those Black Series figures you were hunting down. Last but not least, I've got to give a shout out to Amy, who organizes Collecticon and just puts on a ripper event. It was nice to have a quick chat with Amy, so thanks for the work that you do to put on an awesome show. And of course, I can't forget Phil and Steve from Hungry Jacks, as weird as that sounds, after we finished up at Collecticon, Matt, Andrew, Ryan and myself went and had a quick bite at Hungry Jack's in Penrith. As we're walking out, uh, two blokes flag us down and said g'day because they, they said they'd seen our videos before, which is awesome. I couldn't believe that. So, hope you boys enjoyed your lunch. It was nice having a chat with you guys. And that's it for another awesome day at Collecticon. This was a fun one. Not only, you know, having a great toy fair and picking up some cool stuff, but having Matt having Andrew, having Ryan there with us from WA. Uh, we, we had a great couple of days, so it wasn't just about collecting on today. We hit up Alfie's Vintage Toys yesterday, and uh, we had some dinner last night, and we spent a, you know we spent the whole day and, and, and part of the evening together today or tonight. We did a live stream. Shout out to everyone who tuned into that live stream. Thank you for making that awesome. And yeah, just an all-around great weekend. As always, Matt, Andrew, and Ryan have looked after me. So a couple of quick things to show you. I showed you the Body Wars set that Andrew hooked me up with in that awesome, amazing gift box. I've got some accessories here and some little minifigures to complete those Body Wars sets. So we've got those two minifigures, and then we've got some missiles that complete those sets. So that I Eliminator and Digi Destroyer set is now complete, so I'm stoked with that. And then a couple of quick items to show you that Ryan hooked me up with. There's that Police Academy claw figure that is awesome. So we get him on display with the other Police Academy figure. I've also got a loose Jurassic Park Muldoon figure. He is complete apart from his, his gun or his missile launcher or whatever the other accessory that he has. This was the only one from Wave 1 of the Vintage line that I don't have loose. So happy to get Muldoon in the collection. And last but not least, Ryan hooked me up with a couple of these wax packs and I absolutely love this. This takes me back to the video store. You know, back in the day at the video store, it wasn't just about the VHS or the video games for me. It was all about the lollies and the wax pack. So these take me back. I've got one of these somewhere. So this this will go with that and display nicely with the real Ghostbusters figures. I, I don't have these. I don't think I've seen these before. Bill and Ted's most atypical movie cards. So they're gonna display really nicely with the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Kenner figures, and I'm, I'm really half tempted to bust these open just because I've not seen these cards before, and I don't know what they look like, but 
I don't know, I'm in two minds. So I will, I will keep those sealed for now and display those with the Kenner figures. Oh, and one more. A little Alfie's pickup from yesterday. We got one of the uh, Super Mario Brothers movie figures. Just loose. Oh, I saw this at Alfie's and had to jump on it. And uh, yeah, really happy to have that. So maybe we're going to start a new collection of that. And that's about it for another awesome Collecticon. I'm going to wrap it up there. It was an early start this morning and I'm absolutely knackered. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've hung around this far, you're a dead tech champion. Hope to hear from you in the comments. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.